So the next question is, you know, all right, we'll be, you know, we make a bit of make a bit of money here. Um, now, how do we, you know, how do we uh, show that that we made some money? How do we, let's say, plot it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's there's multiple ways of doing that. Uh, but what I want to show and, and do today is really start with the absolute uh, most basic things so to so get some ideas mm -hmm. of how this is done, right? And um, you remember when we went uh, with the threshold at 120, mm -hmm. we actually had a number more trades. And, and what, the reason why I want to do this is and and maybe we reduce this uh, to one. Maybe we get even more trades. Oh yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. See, see, you get more trades. And the reason why I want to do this is I want to show you how to plot your profit curve. How do you, how do you plot your profit? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the way I normally do this is I create a list called P and Ls. So when we create a list, we have to initialize it, and an empty list has square brackets. And then once we have this, we can then fill this list with what we want. And then usually what I also do is I produce another list with dates. Because if we want to plot this, it's much, much easier to plot it with dates rather than just data points. You see this often in old trading systems. Instead of dates, they just use trade numbers. And it looks horrible. It's really not nice. So dates actually make a lot more sense. And um, Right now, for simplicity, we just plot the uh, the profits that we made. Okay, so what we can do is we can do this. We can do p and ls dot append. So in Python, in order to add something to a list, we do a dot append, mm -hmm. and then all we do is we just put in the p and l value here. So this p and l percentage p and l we calculated, uh, we put it in here. Okay. And then what I also want to do is I want to do dates.append. Mm -hmm. And so now, how do I get the date for this? Because at the moment, we just have an index i. Actually, we could just use that. We just use i, the index. Yeah. <laughs> and so this gives us the number at which uh, we exited the trade. Again, we look at the trade exit, which is kind of <laughs> like similar to the close price. It's kind of the important number here. And in, in, in it's sort of what we want. So if we run this, we could do now, now we can plot something. And you remember we imported, uh, we did an import up here, matplotlib.pyplot is PLT. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we wanted to plot something now, what we can do is we can go plt.plot and then uh, we have our dates and our P and L's. And if we plot this, this is our uh, profit uh, curve. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly, um, you mm -hmm. can see we've got some negative ones here as well. And and you see, you see, this is this is not um, this is not really great because it's just we see oh yeah here we made a little bit of profit here we lost something here we made some it doesn't really tell us much about how we actually how much we actually made eventually do you have any idea how we could get to from this which is basically these percentage values to something that um that shows us how much profit we actually made i mean like either take like the average out of like the so to say like concrete numbers like on what we made on each trade um and then just that's one way together. to do it but actually the best way to do it is if we take those profits and we just sum them up one by one yeah mm -hmm. so you know if we made a dollar and then another dollar and another dollar we have one two three four five right or we mm -hmm. lose a dollar then it's like four you know mm -hmm. so there's a really convenient thing and this is where numpy comes in the, the mathematics package numpy mm -hmm. Uh, because there's something called a cumulative sum. And the cumulative sum basically goes through all the numbers and then calculates the sum in a cumulative way. And in NumPy, it's called cum 
cum sum cumulative sum or cum sum <laughs> um so if we, <laughs> i know don't laugh so if we do this this is going to be much more interesting now i want to i want to just change this a little bit here uh uh, with, with our back test uh, with this one because it just gave us some uh, quite some negative returns and I want to show you really a simple example. So what I did is I changed the threshold here, the threshold plus five, and what you can see is here we've got like some positive percentages now. Okay, all of them, and so this makes it a little bit clearer just for demonstration. And now mm -hmm. you can see we have a beautiful um, cumulative profit curve. See. We made on one trade 4% and then we made 8% and then here we made another one. In order to make this even fancier, uh, we can add a different bullet. You see this here with this bullet thing. Mm. And then uh, we can see mm. here the dots. So here, here first, actually we don't have the first trade. So the first trade is down here. You know, the first trade is actually made just, just under 1% and then so, so this is basically our profit curve, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, one question is, do you think um, summing up percentages is a good idea? Not really. <laughs> Why not? Mm, because I think like there's this thing, right? If you have like a hundred bucks and you get 1% on it, then you have 101. But then if you get another 1% on it, it's not 102, like, so it's 100, I don't know, and then, like, you know, something, like, with Any smaller idea? percentages. Yeah, so so basically, actually, it's not a bad, summing up percentages has its merits. It's actually not so, it's not so bad, and this, this is a little bit more to do with quantitative mathematics, and we go into this later. 